Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and today we are brewing an English Porter. If you like grain to glass videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel as I have lots of grain to glass videos available and I'm gonna be producing even more in the future. I also wanna take a moment to thank my channel members. So thank you so much for taking the time to support my channel. Anyway guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Beersmith 3 recipe notes and then we can go right into the brew day. So now we can jump into the Beersmith 3 recipe notes with the English Porter. We're planning a 4.2 gallon batch. Our malt bill, we have five different types of malt here with the base malt being Maris Otter at 73%. We're also using black malt for color. We're using chocolate malt and crystal malt for uh, the sweet uh, characteristics you would expect from them. And then also brown malt is uh, very standard in the style as well so we're adding around 12% of the grist with brown malt. Uh, for the hops we're using EKGs, we're using a bittering edition at 60 minutes and then a flavor edition at 15 minutes. And then for the yeast we're choosing darkness from imperial yeast. I try to choose imperial yeast whenever I possibly can because of the high cell count. I like doing that so I can uh, not do as many starters. If we do go to the starter tab, we did uh, we do need 150 billion cells for this batch, and since it's imperial yeast, it provides 200 billion in one pack, so there's no need for a starter here. For the water chemistry, um, we're using a little bit higher on the chlorates of sulfate, almost around two to one. Next, we can go ahead and jump into the brew day. We first double milled our grains to a fine crush. Next, we measured out our brewing salts with 3.9 grams of chalk, 2.6 grams of Epsom salt, 3.3 grams of salt, 1.6 grams of baking soda, 0.8 grams of gypsum, 0.7 grams of calcium chloride, and 2.5 milliliters of lactic acid. After the water was adjusted, we mash in. After 15 minutes into the mash, we measure a 5.3 pH. After a 60 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out, we lift the grain basket up to drain the grains. Next, we sparge with one gallon of room temperature distilled water. Once the grains are removed, we take a pre-boil gravity reading and it measured out to 1046, which was on target. Once we hit a boil, we add one ounce of EKGs at 60 minutes and one ounce at 15 minutes. After 45 minutes into the boil, we run boiling wort to the pump line and chiller to sanitize the equipment. After the wort has been cooled to pitching temp, we move the wort over to the fermenter and pitch darkness from imperial yeast. Our OG measures out to around 1040H, which was four points under target. After two weeks in the fermenter, we move the beer over to a keg using a low oxygen transfer method. So here we are at the end of the video to go over the English Porter. I have this right in my hand. I actually brewed this a few weeks ago, so it's been on tap for a while now, and it's been an absolute fantastic beer. Uh, right now, we're gonna talk about the brew day, and then we can go into the tasting notes at the end of the video where, where you can go over aroma, mouthfeel, uh, flavor, and appearance. Uh, so first of all, to talk about the brew day, I don't have a whole lot of notes, honestly. It went really smooth. I didn't really have any big hiccups. Um, I did forget to record my final gravity. I guess that's the only thing I can mention. Um, so I don't really know really specifically what this is ending up at. It should end up around like 5.2 and, and really, I mean, the final gravity measure, measurements are always pretty accurate uh, with Beersmith 3. Um, so it's probably around the low fives, which is uh, good enough for me. I don't typically brew porters. 
Usually if I'm craving something on the darker side, usually I'm a stout kind of guy, but my wife specifically requested that I do a porter, um, so I took a crack at the style. As far as brew day notes, I mean, that really wraps it up. I don't really have a whole lot. It was a really smooth brew day, so we can go into appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. So first of all, appearance. Um, so as you can tell, it is a very, very dark beer. Um, you can't really see through it all too well. If you do hold it up to a light, you do see this really cool ruby color. But I would say for color in general, it's a very, very dark brown. Um, the head is also tan and it does linger for quite a while as well. Next, we can go into aroma. So the aroma, it, it smells really, really great. I would, it definitely smells sweet. I would say uh, toffee-like comes to mind. Uh, you do get kind of a, almost like a sweet chocolate smell. Um, you do kind of get those like traditional biscuit, bready, toasty notes as well. And as far as hop aromas, it's really hard to pick up on the hop aromas. Really what comes to mind is really those like sweet toffee-like, uh, caramel-like aromas. Uh, but the only thing that comes to mind is maybe like an earthy note when it comes to the aroma. Next, we can go into mouthfeel. So and as far as mouthfeel goes, I would say it's probably a medium light to medium body. And lastly, we can go into flavor. There's a lot going on with the flavor with this one. It's very, very sweet though. Um, it, I almost want to say you do get those toffee-like flavors as well, along with the aroma, um, almost like a licorice flavor. And you also do get those traditional bready, biscuity notes, similar to the aroma as well on the flavor. Some more things that come to mind, coffee, not so much. There really isn't like a burnt flavor um, at all with this. Caramel also comes to mind. As far as hot flavor, it's not, it's really hard to tell with the hot flavor because really it's just like those sweeter, maltier flavors that come through with this one. Um, I would say maybe like earthy notes for the uh, flavor as well, but man, it's really subtle. This is really sweet and it tastes really great, but it is definitely on the sweeter side. And on the finish, it's really not all that bitter either. I, I believe this ended up at around 28 to 30 IBUs, or at least it should have been. Um, and it's uh, really subtle. Again, it's really sweet. You get a lot of those sweeter malty flavors. Definitely leads towards the malty side, which I really don't mind since it's a porter. Um, and I usually don't make a lot of sweeter porters uh, like this anyway. So it's kind of fun to have something like this on tap uh, and as it starts to get a little colder here in Michigan. But anyway, guys, that really wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more Grand Glass videos like this. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.